So we'll tell you the answer right up front. To select a gear cutter to mill a gear, you need to know three things. Diametral pitch or module, pressure angle, and tooth count. There's some more information you need once you get going, like uh, your depth of cut, and we'll unpack that a little bit for you as we go forward. But that's what you need to know. Here's our handy chart that shows what uh, at least a convention of certain suppliers has as far as tooth count versus gear cutter. And it also shows that you can get gear cutters in half sizes to get even more accurate on your involute shape for the gears that you're trying to make. And it also gives you references back to some of the information on hole count, etc. Here's a photo of all the gear cutters next to each other. There's a set of eight. And on the left is the one that cuts a rack. And on the one on the right is for a small tooth count, like for the pinions. Again, set of eight. Easy to recognize once you know what you're looking at. Shows the uh, single row involute cutters. And the chart below shows a each cutter in their tooth range. So, for example, cutter number eight goes from 135 teeth to a rack. Cutter one goes between 12 and 13 teeth, much narrower range. And, and that's uh, an important to kind of look at the minimum and maximums to know that you really can't cut something, a pinion of less than 12 teeth with one of these uh, disc cutters. Also, you'll, you'll notice that there are some hobs up above that we'll look at here in just a second. So for this 66 tooth gear, I would choose cutter number seven because it goes between 55 and 135. The, the cutter itself has uh, some things to unpack here. So there's your diametral pitch and it could be a module one, but this is DP. And then there's a pressure angle, which we'll unpack a little bit more in a second. This is cutter number eight, like we were talking about, and it goes between 135 and a rack. Uh, they use the infinity symbol for an infinite tooth count. So there it is, to select a cutter, you need three things, your diametral pitch or module, your pressure angle, and your tooth count. All meshing gears must match these parameters for sure, or they will tear each other up. Now this is uh, shows that one hob can do the work of all eight gear cutters basically and and uh, the hob can use this generating motion on a hobby machine to cut a lot of different tooth counts it also has minimum and maximums but uh, it can cut everything in between this is a neat diagram from Radzovich and shows uh, the profile here first and all the little lines there of what all the other disc cutters would look like here's the rake surface that's what's going to be coming in contact with your metal as you cut your gear also, the cutting edge is shown there, kind of a white highlight. And, you know, there's this clearance surface for chip evacuation, you know, that, that gets narrower, these teeth do, as you'll see in some of the diagrams. Further from the rake surface, you'll, you'll see that narrowing. And again, that's the profiles versus tooth count on that diagram. Now we're highlighting cutter number eight. This is in an opposite convention of the other ones. So these cutters, uh, for various marketing reasons, can be marked in varied ways. So here's the one of the cutters up against a ruler. It shows the profile of the cutter that will uh, make an approximate involute shape in your gear. Let's go back and unpack this pressure angle thing. I think there's some better ways to show it and, and help you reverse engineer your gears going forward. But this cutter shows that it's a 14 and a half degree pressure angle, slope of the gear tooth at the pitch circle. That's the definition and it's really key. So in the beginning of gear making, uh, it was a basic global definition difference. So most of this started in Europe, there's 20 degree pressure angle module gears for most of the world. And then America, Great Britain, Alaska, we were 14 and a half pitch people. So here's some other in gear terms, angles that you're familiar with. Here's thread gauges, and they have a 60 degree included angle, which is half that is uh, the 30 degrees is a pressure angle. So that's a pretty wide one. 
But an another one you might be familiar with is in Acme gears. I have a 29 degree included angle, which is a 14 and a half degree pressure angle, which is a shared number with gears and something you might see when you look down at your lead screw on your lathe, uh, if you're familiar with Acme screws uh, otherwise. So this just shows uh, showed all, all three of those uh, different pressure angles in a, in a graphic. So here we are trying to get a thread, a gear gauge to measure our gear. So there's one that does both 14 and a half and 20. So let's see how they look. They both roll on the gear just fine. So at first glance, you might think it could be either one, but here's how you really tell the difference. If they make contact at the pitch circle, just like the definition, it fits. And so when it's rolling a 14 and a half gear gauge on this and it shows that it fits on the contact, that's when you know you got it. Here's the 20 degree gear gauge. But if you look there, uh, that's what it looks like when it's not a fit and it fits on the shoulder. It runs on the shoulder, not on the pitch circle. So that's just a good example with that gear of how that, how that all works. Uh, so when you're doing this yourself, you can tell the difference between them. So here we are back to milling a gear and uh, you know doing the work. So after you've set your machine up and you know, refer to some previous videos we've done on dividing heads and how they work and how to, uh, you know, index to the next tooth. You'll need to set up the working depth and, and de or depth of cut. Excuse me. So when you when you do that, um, you're, you're going to want to know a few definitions. And one is hole depth, which is the full depth that gets cut. And then there's working depth, which is where the gear runs. And the difference between them is clearance. Now, the reason that's important is some suppliers can define that a little differently. So you need to look at what's marked on the tool and also probably... So for cutters, we just added uh, cutting tools to our store. So from our homepage, just come over here to gear cutting tools. And uh, there are basically three broad categories. Pitch with a pressure angle of 14 and a half. Uh, also pitch, but with a pressure angle of 20. This is kind of the... Uh, red herring here in the middle and then module gears or metric gears usually 20 degrees and and so on so there's a huge selection of pitches or modules here that you can choose from so let's say we want a metric gear 20 degree pressure angle you know something like that it uh, we scroll down and it, it allows you to find just the cutter you're looking for and shows you the cutter diameter and the cutter bore. So you can go ahead and add that to cart and uh, get the cutter you need. These are All right, let's get back. So let's look at these hobs again. Uh, suppliers are Truvolute, Japanese, ITW, Micron, Gleason, Harbin, Import. And the reason I put those hobs here is to show that some are pitch 20, some are pitch 14 and a half. And some are module 20. The module ones are all 20. All right. Now, here's one drawback to the cutters. They, in the conventional sense, they can't uh, they can't cut the the undercut. So this is uh, again a, an area where, for small tooth count gears, a <clears throat> a uh, hob gear would be superior. But here's what you need to watch out for when you have very few teeth. The single row cutter cannot cut that undercut. And so it's going to tend to bind a little bit, and that's what you need to watch out for on small tooth count gears. Now, when I'm talking about gears, they come in a pair. They, they've got to uh, run against two gears, typically for some sort of gear reduction or gear increase. So the gear is called the gear, and the pinion's the small one. Usually, the pinion is the thing that uh, is what gets repaired all the time. Here we have some, uh, we're now in the CNC world, and we have some single disc cutters on some Cat 40 tubing. They're the same uh, same style cutters we've been looking at with the involute shape. The same system applies. In this case, we have a CNC mill with a 5C collet indexer, which is satisfactory for certain gears to go ahead and, and cut, uh, you know, get your blank on an arbor and cut a gear in this setup. The uh, tailstock would be pushed up against the arbor for some extra strength, and you just write a little routine and go to town. Hope that's been helpful to you guys. Happy gear making, 